All right, welcome back. So VLANs can be a pretty confusing topic as evidenced by the endless videos explaining VLANs out there on YouTube. And I figured you can't have too much of a good thing, so why not make another video on, on VLANs? But luckily for you, I'm not gonna do a video explaining VLANs, but if you want one, I can do that as well and add my own contribution to the mix. Uh, this video is gonna go slightly deeper into VLANs and actually explore a topic, well, not a topic, but a question that I found super confusing and maybe it's just me, but it took me a while to get my head around. So I thought I would go through and explain kind of this question and kind of how I got to the bottom of it. And that question was, why are VLANs on separate subnets? Now, if you're a networking expert, who knows, maybe this, this is obvious, but it wasn't making sense to me right off. And where this all started for me was one day I was looking at, well, actually this screen right here, which is my port interface on my Unified Dream Machine. I was checking out some of the port configurations. And in particular, I was looking at this screen and I was looking at kind of the tagged VLAN management options. And in this uh, option, tagged VLAN management, allow all, block all, custom. And I was trying to figure out what block all really meant. I did a bunch of reading on it and I was trying to just understand what direction the traffic was flowing and how that would uh, interact with the VLAN and what exactly it meant. And it, it just wasn't, it kind of wasn't clicking with me. And then I was going back and I was looking at uh, my network setup. So I was looking at all my networks, kind of looking at each one of these, but I was looking at each of my networks and you can see that each of my networks is on a separate subnet and you dig into each one. And of course, each one is on a separate VLAN. And if you go and create a new virtual network, it goes down the same path, right? It sets a different VLAN ID and basically maintains a one-to-one -one mapping between networks and VLANs. And I didn't really understand why that was. And the reason was I was kind of coming at the concept of VLANs from the notion of the OSI model. I'll put a diagram of the OSI model up on the screen, but VLANs are implemented as a layer two concept. And um, the VLAN tag is carried in the ethernet frame. So at least in my mind, I was like, well, hey, if, if VLANs are implemented at layer two, why is there such a tight coupling between VLANs and networks? And why is the Unify interface in, enforcing this relationship? And I just, I just was trying to figure that out. And so what I was thinking was, if VLANs are implemented at layer two, then like that is all happening without any IP networking. And so could I just build one single network, one big subnet with a whole bunch of VLANs under it? I started to dig into some experimentation on this. Now, I didn't really have a use case as to why I would want to do that. The subnets I have here work perfectly well. This was more of a theoretical exercise. Like, could I have one single network and divide everything up by VLANs and so this is where having a virtualization environment is awesome. So I spun up a bunch of VMs, set up different networks, set up different VLAN configurations, quickly found out I could not get it working no matter what I tried. Now, of course, the networking experts watching this are now laughing and um, what is this, amateur hour? again, I was kind of working through this problem like, well, okay, I can't get it work, uh, working in the virtualization environment. So let's figure out what's going on here. So to show why this doesn't work, Let's walk through an example of what happens when two machines are trying to talk to each other. So let's start with a simple diagram. And what we'll do is let's throw two machines on it. And we will say this machine is at address 162, uh, 192.168.10.1 slash 24. This will be machine A. And there's going to be no VLAN. We're going to start this uh, super simple. And then we'll have machine B over here. At 192.168.10.2 slash 24. So two machines, same network, no VLANs involved. So now what happens when machine A wants to communicate with B? So what happens is computer A is gonna send a message to computer B 
and it looks at the address. It says, hey, I need to send a message to computer B, and it looks at the subnet mask, and it looks at the address 192.168.10, the network address, and it's like, hey, we're on the same network. Perfect, I don't need to really do much work here. So what it needs to then do is it's gonna send out an ARP request packet. If it doesn't already have it, I'm gonna kind of bypass all the caching. But now it basically needs uh, the layer two, the MAC address of the computer, of the, the computer associated with IP address uh, 10.2 on this network. So it's gonna send out the ARP request and say, hey, does anyone around here have the IP address? Sorry, I keep messing this up. Does anyone around here have the MAC address for IP address 192.168.10.2? Again, they're on the same network, no VLANs involved. So the ethernet frame will be delivered to computer B. Computer B will be like, yep, that's me. Uh, the frame will come back and the two computers can communicate. Things are great. Now let's add VLANs to the mix. So we'll just take these, copy them. For completeness, I'll add some fake MAC addresses. And we will say computer A is on VLAN 10. Computer B, we'll give it a MAC address of CC colon DD, is on VLAN 20. Now remember, I'm kind of oversimplifying the diagram, but in actuality, these are each connected to a switch, right? They're on the same network. And it's gonna be a managed switch, so it's VLAN aware. We're just gonna assume all that. Now let's see what happens in this case again. Computer A wants to talk to computer B. It's gonna go through the same process. It's gonna recognize computer B is on the same network and it's gonna say, perfect. My friend is on the same network so now I just need to get the MAC address associated with his IP address. Again, I'm assuming no uh, ARP caching at this point. So he's gonna send a message out. And he's gonna say, hey, does anyone around here know the MAC address for IP 192.168.10.2? Yours truly and the ethernet frame is gonna be tagged with VLAN 10. This is gonna go up to the switch. The switch is VLAN aware, so it understands the VLAN associated with each port. And so it knows the port that, VLAN, that computer B is on is VLAN 20. And so it's gonna get this ethernet frame with VLAN 10, and it's not gonna send it out the VLAN 20 port because it's like, they don't match, I'm not gonna do that. And right there is the root of the problem. And for me, this was an aha moment when it finally all made sense. Like, yeah, here's why you can't have multiple, multiple machines on the same network with multiple VLANs. And is this case, because of this, they won't communicate with each other because the frames won't get forwarded by the switch. And you can see right here, it couldn't, it wouldn't even be able to get, the ARP request would fail. It wouldn't even be able to get the MAC address of the other machine and be able to communicate it, communicate with it. So that's game over, it fails right there. So how do we solve that problem? Well, we add other networks as we saw in the beginning. But let's just look at what happens in that case and show why this works. So what we can do is we can actually just copy the same diagram and I'm going to pretend, we're gonna pretend that this box is a router right now. So this is a, a layer three router and what we're gonna do is, let's see what happens if we're to move these, one of these machines to a different network. And so we're gonna put machine B, we're gonna put him, we're gonna change him to 192.168.20.1. And so now he's on a different network. Now, going through the process again, remember, this is a router, not a switch in this case. And computer A is like, hey, I want to talk to computer B. Computer B is at 192.168.20.1. And now it realizes, again, it's going to use the subnet mask to understand if that machine is on the same network or not. And it's to be like, okay, wait a second. 
this machine is not on the same network. So here is where it's different from the previous case. Now it's like, okay, the machine is not on the same network. So I need to not communicate directly with the machine. I actually need to communicate with my default gateway. It's gonna have the router configured as this default gateway with an IP address like 192.168.10.1. Obviously I didn't set that up correctly here, but you get the idea. This would probably be like 10.2 and this would be 20.2, but we're keeping it simple. And so it would communicate with the default gateway. And then that this router is able to do uh, routing between VLANs. So what it will do is it will receive, obviously it'll go through the, the ARP process to find out, hey, does anyone know the MAC address for my gateway IP? Uh, and it'll say, yep. And so the message gets sent up here to the router and then the router turns around and it knows that the 192.168.20 network is off of this port. And it's like, great, I know how to handle that. And then I'll send the traffic out this port. And then in these cases, these are also like, in the case of like a unified machine. And then it'll send the traffic out this port and I'll add the VLAN identifier on the way. So it'll add the VLAN 20. And now you have these two machines communicating between two VLANs using subnets. So that is it. That was kind of a quick one today, but hope it was helpful. I know again, when I, when I was thinking through like, Hey, VLANs work at layer two, why do I need to have separate subnets? It wasn't immediately obvious to me, but when I finally work through it from what is happening at a communication level, when two computers try to talk to each other, it became very obvious. I found it a useful exercise to go through and learn. Hope it was helpful to you too, and we'll see you next time.